today as we continue to delve into CFRA sector views on the November election, the impacts of and the impacts of Biden wins. Today we're going to take a deeper look at how the election impacts the industrial sector and specifically infrastructure. So what is infrastructure and how do we define it? Infrastructure is the foundation that connects businesses and enables communities to thrive. Roads, water systems, the energy grid, and more help drive the economy, support quality of life, and ensure public health and safety. A well-functioning and modern infrastructure is essential to global economic development and the quality of life. The U.S. infrastructure story is one of decades of underfunding, though. The scorecard you see on the slide here is published every four years by the American Society of Civil Engineers. This most recent scorecard was published in 2017, and it really highlights the dire state of American infrastructure. The cumulative grade is a D plus, unchanged from the 2013 scorecard. Without significant infrastructure spending supported by the federal government, further deterioration is imminent. We've highlighted here some of the transportation categories and their grades, which are very very poor overall. Rail is the best performer with a grade of B, but roads and other transit are in very poor condition. So now we're going to review some of the implications of a Biden victory. If Trump is reelected, we expect the operating environment to be relatively unchanged from the prior four years. The Democratic platform weaves its plans for $2 trillion of infrastructure spending into the, in the next four years into green and climate protecting initiatives. It is not a question that both parties consider infrastructure spending to be a very strong near-term need. So there are many industries and end markets that we think will benefit from any kind of infrastructure spending plan, no matter who the president is. Here, we're highlighting items that are in the Democratic platform that are specific to infrastructure for the electrical grid, manufacturing, and transportation. So the Democratic platform proposes an infrastructure bank which is a public bank that leverages public and private resources to build infrastructure projects. The platform also highlights investing in interstate transmission systems with advanced grid technologies to power communities with federal support. Investments in public transportation will also rise with the goal to increase quality and affordability, all while lowering the transportation system's carbon footprint. The Buy Clean and Buy America initiative incentivizes the production of low carbon building and construction materials, and it includes the assumption that the U.S. will rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement. It also includes some taxes and fees and levies on imports if they are not in alignment with the Paris Climate Agreement. One of the most aggressive goals presented in the campaign platform is the goal to eliminate carbon pollution from power plants by 2035. This is a very lofty goal, and it really involves that some of these items we've gone through on this slide are tackled immediately in these immediate next four years. So now moving on to uh, some areas where we see winners and losers under a Biden administration. As I mentioned on the previous slide, any kind of infrastructure spending plan would be very beneficial for U.S. infrastructure and the industrial sector on a whole, no matter who the president is. On this slide, we're presenting some end markets that we forecast will be winners and losers if Biden is elected and implements his infrastructure spending plans. Winners are determined by where we think federal dollars will flow and how long it will take to start seeing benefits. In the near term, we see electric vehicle trucking and transportation benefiting almost immediately. Many trucking companies such as Cummins and Packard are still deep in the research and development stages and are in early stages of testing and implementation. We think support from the federal government will really accelerate R&D and testing and then get us to implement, get them to implementation much faster. All of these efforts will support electric vehicles in the market on a much more accelerated timeline. Under Biden, we see easing trade tensions as he prefers international cooperation, which we think will stabilize trade relationships and provide more visibility for planning on the side of management of these um, industrial companies. The de-escalation of trade tensions would benefit U.S. exporters that depend heavily on overseas revenue and on domestic importers that have significant offshore production, which is extremely common for heavy manufacturers in the industrial and infrastructure sector. 
In the long term, we expect agricultural manufacturers revenue to rise under the platform goal that is to make the US the first country in the world to achieve net zero emissions. Since companies like Deere will need to develop and manufacture new high tech machinery that will cost more and drive up revenue. Companies like Train Technologies and Rockwell Automation work on smart buildings, which is an area where we see funding flowing heavily to under a Biden administration. The Democratic platform also places a heavy emphasis on improving the efficiency of and the build out of the power grid. We see companies like Eaton and Qantas Services as well positioned to benefit from electrification and grid modernization. Finally, to wrap up, there are a few end markets that we think will face stronger headwinds under a Biden administration. We think the phase one trade deal with China will be in question under the Biden administration, which we think will be a negative for farmers who are expecting increased commodity and crop purchases from China, especially soybeans. Manufacturing companies that have not already begun to work on electric vehicles, automation or smart technologies that are designed to reduce their carbon footprint will face rising hoops to jump through in order to be in line with what we assume is rising regulation and policy. Finally, under a Biden administration, we expect increased corporate taxes, which would drive lower earnings across the industry. I hope this update on industrials and infrastructure was helpful. For more information on CFRA research, I encourage you to visit MarketScope Advisor at advisor.marketscope.com or contact us by phone or email. Thanks so much for listening today.